Let's talk about free APIs, free public APIs that you can use today to build a website, test out an idea, see whether it ranks on Google. So make a website using a free public API. You don't pay for anything to start with. You test whether the website idea is good and then you double down on it. So you might be asking yourselves, what is the point of all of this, right? So basically what I'm trying to say is you can take a, an API and you can build a website around it, right? By dynamically showing people what they're looking for. An example of this is what is my IP, right? A very common search because people need to know their IP. I would make an educated guess that this website will have ads on it. I'm not 100% sure if that's true. So it does have ads, as you can see at the, at the bottom here. These are, these are ads that people are paying for, right? So what I'm saying is what is my IP.com? You make a competitor to whatismyip.com. You use IP stack, which is a, this one's not actually free and open source. It's free for hundred a month, but then, you know, once you start scaling, you will need to pay for it. But the CPM compared to costs of the API, you'll be profiting, right? So what I'm saying is you can make one of these websites where you show people their IP address and then make ad revenue from that. There's free APIs here. You can make money from this by building websites around it. And I've got plenty more videos coming where I talk about how to build a website for practically nothing. Now I've got a couple more videos coming where I'm going to be talking about how to make a website for literally free. So for $1, it's a whole new thing. You don't have to pay $15 for a domain. You don't have to pay for Bolt. I've got some really, really good videos coming on that guys. But today's video is going to be about public APIs. So all you do is you go on Google, you type in public APIs GitHub, and then you just open this one here. Now, while I'm going through this, I'm going to give you some ideas that I came up with um, or that I come up with now using these APIs, okay? So try public AI APIs for free. The public API repository uh, is manually created by community members like you and folks working on API layer. It includes an extensive list of public APIs from many domains that you can use for your own product. Consider it a treasure trove of API, APIs well managed by the community over the years. Now the really cool thing about this is straight away I can show you a really, really good example, right? Let's just go down to the index and we'll just go to cryptocurrency. And then this one here, API coin layer, real-time cryptocurrency exchange rates, right? So instead of paying for an API to build something like, you know, a cryptocurrency tracker or whatever it might be, you can literally just use a free public API that is available to everyone and anyone. So what I like to do personally is I like to think about which topics are likely to yield traffic, right? So animals, very, very popular, of course. So adopt a pet, resource to get pets adopted, love it. Cat facts, daily cat facts, pretty useless. Cat as a service, pretty useless. Pictures of cats from Tumblr, pretty useless. Like some of these aren't great, but like this, based on the Stanford Dogs data set, what does that mean? The internet's biggest collection of open source dog pictures, which means that as long as you say that you got this picture from dog.ceo, you can literally use these images, right? And I'm guessing you can, yeah, you can do breeds. So slash breeds, yeah, there we go. That's the breed right there. Like if you've got a dog website, which by the way, I have a dog website, um, I could have used this public API to give more life and potentially even rank better on this project. But I didn't know about this at the time. So obviously the one thing that is missing from this page is a picture of the dog, right? So you could use dog.ceo slash dog API for that exact reason. And it took hardly any time to find that. eBird retrieve recent or notable birding observations within a region. This is a huge, huge idea. I don't know if this is free. Sometimes you click on them and they used to be free four years ago. Now they're paid. You do need to check, like some of the links don't even work on some of these. So it doesn't look like it's free anymore, but um, it does say running postman, which normally if there's a, a running postman button, it does mean that it's free. Uh, it looks like it might be free. So like you could easily build like a bird spotting website, which would do very, very well, I promise you. Like when was this bird last seen in this location and you know, whatever. So you can very easily just think about how to make a website around one of these APIs. Again, fish watch, information and pictures about individual fish species. We've talked on the channel in the past where you make a website about fish species using a data set from Kaggle. But instead of doing that, you can get something that's much more up to date, much more in depth, completely free 
and completely open to use, which in this case is, yeah, this website here, Fishwatch. If you actually go on here though, like I said, sometimes you go on the link and it's redirected to a new link and it doesn't work anymore. So definitely just be careful with that. So now what I like to do is I like to think, okay, so, you know, animals could get a lot of traffic, but what could make a lot of money, right? So I look at business. This is something I was doing last night. And I came up with this. This is genius, guys. You can take this idea if you want. Tenders in Spain, tenders in Romania, tenders in Poland, tenders in Hungary. If you can help companies find tenders, you will make money, okay? Because tenders are, tenders are basically government contracts if you're in the US. And uh, basically what people do is they apply for tenders, they win tenders, and then their uh, business gets money from the government, right? There you can see, this is API for procurement in Spain. The Tenders Guru API allows you to get data for procurement in Spain in JSON format. You can see here there's ID, date, title, description. Very, very interesting, guys. So yeah, this was just another idea I had, like a, a tender searcher or a tender uh, platform, right, to help people find procurement tenders. Very, very interesting. So business, and then another one that I saw was finance, and then another one that I saw was government. This is fascinating to me. Now, I don't know how to make money from this, but I feel like there's money to be made in census data, city data, code.gov, which is just all of the government's open source code, uh, data USA, so US public data. Like, you know, you can see how you could make like a population website, a weather website. So if we do control F and look for weather, you'll see weather stack retrieve instant accurate weather information for any location in the world. So obviously, again, you're going to be competing with Google and things like that, but there are certain things, right? Like air purity, I've always thought would be a really, really good idea. Weather, I think there's specific ways to um, get specific weather information that Google might not be answering, right? So like, what is the wind in Galway right now? Now, I'm not saying Google isn't going for that keyword. I'll show you what I mean. So what is the wind um, in Galway now? Yeah, so you can. this is what I mean by Google is already competing for that, right? They, Google has decided in their infinite wisdom that they are number one <laughs> and they will answer most people's questions using, you know, scraping other people's websites or using an API or they, they're literally probably just connected to uh, this exact API because it's a free uh, public API. It does say pricing actually at the top here, but normally, just so you guys know, um, they have free, yeah, so it's 100 calls per month. Uh, this is up to 50,000 calls per month. So basically what you can extract from this is like, okay, so I get 100 calls per month for free. No one will go on my website um, at the start. Once traffic starts to rise, as long as it makes sense financially, i.e. you make a profit, you can pay for the API. So if it's $9.99 and you're getting 50,000 hits, right? And each of those hits gives you, you know, a few different sessions or whatever it might be. And they might go on a few different pages on your website. Um, you're probably, or, or you might get more than one impression per uh, view. So you're probably gonna get like, what, 150,000 impressions? 150,000 impressions, which, you know, even at a low CPM is, you, this is just head maths but you're probably gonna be looking at like $50, I would say, maybe a little bit less. So you're gonna be making profit, right? Because you're paying $9.99 and you're making $50. So that's just a few things to think about. It's not always completely free and open, but generally speaking, uh, yeah, they're pretty free and open. Now there are some other really interesting ones on here. I'll let you guys go through this yourselves. I'll let you guys work this out for yourselves, but you know, IP stack, very interesting. Like what this will be running things like whatismyip.com which uh, a lot of people use every single day. It's exactly the same pricing method. Um, 50,000 requests a month would be 11.99 or 12.99 if billed monthly. I'll let you guys discover this for yourselves. This is a really, really helpful resource. It means you can build things for free without paying for API costs. So you can completely remove third party APIs costs from your project and focus purely on making money. Thanks for watching guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of this video, you're an absolute legend and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.